I am at my sister's place. She just had a newborn. I am staying here helping them just mostly take care of the house. So anyways, this video was supposed to be posted on Halloween, but it is now a couple days after Halloween and I'm finally recording it. So in honor of this spooky season, right? We just had Halloween. I am going to talk about the spookiest, most terrifying thing in spirits. And by spirits, I mean distilled spirits, not like ghost spirits. It is the silent villain of the spirits world. It can sneak up on you and potentially kill you without you even noticing. It's the stuff of nightmares that is feared and blamed for your headaches and blindness and death. It's Bethanol. And like most spooky stories, the myth behind methanol has a lot of twists and turns, and we're going to do some debunking today. So before you let this invisible menace haunt your next drink, I'm going to dive into what methanol actually is, how it shows up in your spirits, and if it's truly the monster that people make it out to be. Welcome back everyone. I'm Robin from This Blog's Neat. And if you're new to my channel, I talk about all things distilled spirits. And I like to focus on the science of distilled spirits. So this video is gonna be much more about the science of spirits. And the other night I was out with a friend having some drinks and she told me that she had figured out that she was not able to drink any column distilled spirits. She could only drink pot distilled spirits. And her reasoning behind this was because she had been told by someone in the industry, I'm not going to name names, that pot distilled spirits have all of the methanol removed because they have a heads cut taken during distillation, whereas column distilled spirits don't. And she said it's the methanol that gives her a headache. And so as soon as she drinks any cocktails that have column distilled spirits in it, she gets a headache. And she could tell instantly by my face that I was about to disagree with what she had been told. So there's a few things that we're going to talk about and debunk today. The first is that methanol is concentrated in the heads or methanol is removed in the heads of a pot distilled spirit. The second is that column distilled spirits have more methanol than pot distilled spirits. And third, if we have time for it, that methanol is the sole reason that you're getting a headache when you drink. Before I dive in, I will admit that I once believed these myths and was responsible for perpetuating this myth. And the reason being, which we'll dive into in a little bit, is that methanol does have a lower boiling point than both ethanol and water. So it would make sense that when you're distilling it, it would be coming off the still first. But spoiler alert, that's not the case. And we'll dive into that in a second. But first of all, I want to talk about like, what is methanol actually? And will you go blind and die <laughs> if you consume it? <laughs> so methanol is the simplest alcohol and it is formed naturally during fermentation from the breakdown of pectin, which if you've ever made jellies or jams before, you'll know that pectin is used as a thickening agent and fruits in particular are extra high in pectin. So if you're doing a brandy or wine mash, you're going to have naturally more pectin available and that can be broken down and can form methanol. But there are a number of ways to minimize the production of methanol, meaning the specific breakdown of pectin into methanol. Those ways are using pectinase, which is a specific blend of enzymes that breaks down pectin in a way that it does not produce as much methanol. You can also remove the skins and seeds from the fruit, which are more highly concentrated in pectin. Providing your fermentation with nutrients also helps it stay happy and healthy and minimizes the breakdown of pectin or can minimize the breakdown of pectin. Boiling your mash will also deactivate the enzyme that specifically breaks down pectin that produces methanol. 
that enzyme is called pectin mes- pectin methyl esterase. <laughs> when you're sleep deprived, it's hard to say that word. That specific enzyme is called pectin methyl esterase or PME. Also using tap water in your mash can provide some calcium ions that also deactivate PME and also decreasing the pH of your mash can reduce the efficiency of PME because its optimum pH is eight. So those are all different ways that you can help reduce the production of methanol, but no matter what you do, regardless though, there will be some small amounts of methanol produced most likely in your fermentation. Now, methanol can cause blindness and can cause death. Let's just get that out there right now. Yes, do not consume methanol. (laughs) However, with anything, the dose makes the poison. As little as 10 milliliters of pure methanol can damage your optic nerve and can lead to blindness. And as little as 30 milliliters of pure methanol can be fatal. And that's kind of terrifying because that's very small quantities. But let's put this into perspective for a second. So there are legal maximums of the amount of methanol, the concentration of methanol that you are allowed to have in distilled spirits. In the U.S., that legal max is 7 grams per liter of pure alcohol, and that's equivalent to about 9 milliliters per liter of pure alcohol. So at that concentration, let's assume we're at the legal max. Assuming that concentration, you would have to drink two liters of a 50% ABV spirit in order to get nine milliliters of methanol. And this is in one sitting, by the way. Two and a quarter liters of the same spirit could cause blindness and six and two thirds of a liter liters. Six and two thirds liters two thirds lead two third liters six and two thirds liters and six and two thirds liters could cause death remember that is in one sitting uh, and a very short period of time and most spirits especially spirits that are not fruit based don't come close to that concentration of methanol and let's not forget that ethanol is also toxic so methanol blood levels of 20 milligrams per deciliter are considered toxic and levels of 150 milligrams per liter are considered potentially fatal. For comparison, the lethal blood alcohol, meaning ethanol, levels are around 400 milligrams per deciliter. So keeping all of this in mind, let's assume you are a 200 pound man who has consumed the six and two third liters of 50% ABV spirit. Let's figure out what your blood alcohol content is going to be if you do that in one sitting. So we can use this calculation called the Widmark formula to estimate your blood alcohol concentration based on your body weight, how much alcohol you've consumed, and whether you are male or female. Again, these are estimates. They're going to depend on how acclimated you are to drinking. So based on all of that, right, we figure out the amount of ethanol that you've consumed in that six and two thirds liters of 50% ABV spirit. And we plug that into this equation right here. You can see that your blood alcohol content like i don't even know if this is a if this is a real number because i'm pretty sure it's supposed to be in percentages but anyways this equates to 4260 milligrams per deciliter so you would be dead 10 times over from alcohol poisoning rather than methanol poisoning and let's keep in mind that ethanol metabolism blocks methanol metabolism. Anyway, let's move on to methanol concentration during distillation. First, we need to understand how distillation works just very quickly. I know I've talked about this in other videos, but pot distillation separates components based on boiling point. Simply a liquid like a wine or a beer 
right? Your wash is getting loaded up into the pot and then it's boiled. And the first things that come off the still are the most volatile components or the compounds that have the lowest boiling point. Those vapors are then condensed back into a liquid and come off the still. And distillers will make cuts based on taste, right? Smell and taste perception. The first cut is called the four shots or the heads, and that is primarily made up of ethanol with a little bit of water and then tiny quantities of congeners, meaning compounds that are not ethanol or water. The next cut is the heads cut or the spirit cut that is still primarily ethanol with a little bit more water and still tiny amounts of congeners. And the last cut is the tails or the faints, and that is probably still mostly ethanol, but we're looking at more of a 50-50 split of ethanol and water. And again, with tiny amounts of congeners. For simplicity's sake, the heads tend to taste pretty harsh. The hearts are the good stuff that tastes really nice. And then the tails tend to uh, tend to taste pretty grungy. Now, pure methanol boils at 64.7 degrees Celsius or 148.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Ethanol boils at 78.4 degrees Celsius or 173.1 degrees Fahrenheit. And water boils at 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And because pot distillation separates components based on boiling point, it would make sense that as I said before, methanol would come off first because it's got a much lower boiling point. But that's not the case because methanol loves water. It clings onto it nice and tight. So that means methanol ends up getting smeared across all of the distillation cuts. Some research even shows that methanol is more concentrated in the tails all of this is going to be dependent on a number of factors like the still setup, reflux, uh, the wash composition, the number of distillations that you're using, etc. And one study noted that the various distillation tests carried out showed that the methanol content in the product, the Hartz fraction, can hardly be influenced by different distillation techniques. In short, Methanol is distributed throughout the distillation run, and it isn't simply removed in the heads. So now what about column stills? And again, I have discussed how column stills work in other videos. So simply put, the distillation cuts are now with respect to space rather than time, like it is for a pot still meaning the cuts are made based on the location of the column. So the heads are gonna be at the top, slightly underneath that, somewhere underneath that is going to be the hearts, and then towards the bottom is going to be the tails. Depending on the setup, the heads and the tails might be recycled back in. The taller the still or the more columns that there are, the more rectification you'll get, especially if there are more and more plates, meaning you'll get closer to a pure spirit, meaning pure ethanol. This may also help to separate some of that methanol, but full separation of methanol is probably not going to be possible just as it's not possible to get full separation of ethanol and water just doing distillation using heat you know without like chemical intervention no matter what there are going to be trace amounts of congeners including methanol in your column distilled spirit now shorter columns that have fewer plates might actually behave more like a pot still with respect to purity right so with respect to the amount of methanol that is present so Bottom line is column distilled spirits do not inherently have more methanol than pot distilled spirits. Okay, so let's address whether it's methanol that is causing your headaches while you drink. Methanol can cause headaches. However, there are a bunch of other reasons that could also lead to headaches while drinking and headaches after drinking, right? Like a hangover. Dehydration, congeners, low blood sugar, 
these are all potential causes. And unfortunately, anecdotal evidence is not reliable. So kind of the the questions that you need to think of are, how are you drinking your spirits? Are you drinking them neat? Are you drinking them in cocktails? Is that what leads to your headaches? Do the headaches happen instantly or several hours after you're drinking? I highly recommend checking out Adam Rogers' book called Proof. Um, forgetting the subtitle. <laughs> I'll put it right here. This is the book. And in that, he discusses the complexities of what happens when you drink. What are the effects on your body? Um, And interestingly, ethanol is, I will quote directly from his book, a pain-causing irritant, but also has numbing effects. And it's a decent source of calories, but not nutrition. It crosses the vaunted blood-brain barrier with ease and acts as both a stimulant and as a central nervous system depressant. Its effects vary within a single individual, depending on the circumstances or its consumption, between individuals, depending on genetics and experience, and between groups of individuals, depending on genetics, environment, and tradition. Regarding hangovers, there's also an entire chapter about hangovers. Rogers points out that pretty much anything anybody ever told you about hangovers is wrong. Congeners, including methanol, might play a role, but their combination with ethanol consumption is not well studied. And if methanol were the sole case of your headaches post-drinking, right, several hours after drinking, an easy way to mitigate that is by drinking more ethanol. So having more booze, hair of the dog, right? And that's because ethanol blocks methanol metabolism and methanol metabolism causes headaches as a symptom. Like I said before, some other suspects for potential causes of hangovers or hangover symptoms like headaches is dehydration, but that should be alleviated by consuming water, right? Hydrating. Also consuming ethanol, so booze with glucose, so sugary booze, actually raises your lactate levels and in combination with dehydration can later lead to low blood sugar. That can cause headaches and this can be alleviated by consuming glucose. (laughs) Have some sugar. All of this saying, maybe it's methanol, Maybe it's not that's causing your headaches, but it's probably a combination of a lot of things that are giving you a headache sometimes when you drink. So in conclusion, pot distilled spirits do not contain less methanol than column distilled spirits. It's not column distilled spirits and the methanol in column distilled spirits that's causing your headaches. And I hope this provides a little bit of relief for you since methanol is a really scary thing that we hear about all the time, right? You drink some moonshine and you go blind or you die. All of these myths are stemming from way back in the day when spirits were actually being adulterated and denatured alcohol was being added to them. So extra, extra methanol was being added to them. And that's no longer done. That's no longer practiced. You should be just fine. Just don't drink like six liters of booze in one sitting. Anyways, before I go, I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreons. Thank you guys so much for helping to support the channel. And if you, the viewer, would also like to support the channel and you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me some comments below if you have any questions at all or or anything. Share my channel and this video with your friends, watch more of my videos. You can always join us over on Patreon. I'd be so, so thankful. I've got a link in the description below. And with that, thanks for watching.